So it's been two and a half years, mainly of full of long COVID. Uh, oh, and I had to leave a job um, because of long COVID. But finally, I can afford a trip on the Norfolk Broads in this boat. And um, we're going to see how we get on as a long COVID sufferer, um, complete with family who need to be entertained. Um, so this was the underwhelming introduction to my video. night at uh, London Bridge which is pretty much standard uh, for us uh, absolutely fine for what we needed um, the walk over to the shop even though we had to moor on the opposite bank for me was absolutely fine not a problem walking that sort of distance um, I did go over again for a second time to drop the rubbish off which again was fine but I wanted to go again for a third time just around sunset to get a cool photo of the boat and that might have slightly been too much not too much, but I left to come back and have a rest. The boat's perfectly comfortable. Uh, mooring up was absolutely fine. Uh, and casting off this morning was absolutely fine. So, so far, for someone with uh, fatigue-based illness, uh, we haven't had any problems. Um, the seating position on the boat's been absolutely fine as well. Um, not the most comfortable, but not uncomfortable enough to cause many problems. Um, so yeah, at the moment, happy days. Nice view of what we can see down the river. Today's trip aboard uh, Spring Horizon 2 saw us head down the Bure to Stracey Arms. Uh, hoping we might see the donkeys and we saw them from a distance and we got to go into the little farm shop. Uh, and now we've come down to South House Broad. Um, we've moored just there. That's the wife getting off the boat. So it's nice and close to where we wanted to be. It was the same at Stracey Arms. Uh, we were able to just moor up right by the shop. Uh, so very little movement needed in terms of long distance walking. Um, this is going to be more interesting because I've been told that the uh, coffee shop is um, up, up that fairly steep looking hill somewhere. But again, we'll see how it goes. So far, loving it. Um, the only um, fatigued moment I've had was mooring up at Stracey Arms where um, we had to pull the boat in because uh, the wind was taking it out. Um, and that I did need to have a 10 minute sit down afterwards. Otherwise, so far, all has gone well. More later, I guess. Made it to the top of uh, the hill at South House Broad and found a lovely bench here, which is just perfect for what I needed. Um, and actually, it's quite interesting up here. Oh, look, there's a monkey moo. And uh, just over there uh, is what they call a dark skies viewing platform. So I'm guessing if you stay here overnight, which we're not doing, um, you get really good you know, night sky views of stars and things. Uh, however, I am really impressed that we paid £2.50 for an hour with mooring and it includes a water top up if you want to use that. Um, where we were staying last night at Ludden Bridge was £4 or £6 just for water. So top tip and handy hint for in the future if I need water, £2.50 plus an hour's free mooring is somewhere nice. Sounds good. Another reward at the top of uh, South House Hill is this little climbing frame and then over to there, a slide back down. And as you can see, my five-year-old mastering it beautifully. And actually, he's really enjoyed it here. Lots of things to walk across and look at. And uh, if I turn back around this way, there's all these logs to walk along. And oh, it's just a five-year-old's dream, isn't it? Oh, he's already at the top. <laughs> oh, blimey. That was a climbing move and a half. So the end of day one and uh, we're up to Wroxham uh, for our last stern moor of the day and uh, we've brought, managed to moor so close to the town that I'm not even going to need my electric bike because we've only got to go just over there. Uh, there's the bridge so I mean it's literally no distance at all so I'm very very happy with that. Uh, so should just need the electric bike when we do um, the boardwalk. And good morning from a slightly drizzle and slightly chilly Roxham. Uh, we've had a lovely time so far. Uh, we thought about it yesterday and went, you know what? Not an awful lot has changed compared to what we'd usually do. Yes, we haven't gone on the nice long walks, but we still had a really lovely time. Um, and so just a quick check in to say, yes, we were surviving after two nights. This morning actually wasn't that cold either. Um, and today we're having a day sort of off of the boats. There will still be... Um, a little bit of boating involved later on in the day, but we're having a day off um, where I can pretty much just sit down most of the day. 
um, but we can still get out and about. Um, my son is a huge train fan. I am too, to be fair, but not as big as him. Uh, so it will come as no surprise we're going to go and find a train to ride. Uh, we got through the uh, bridge last night with the pilot, uh, which meant we could moor up here at Hoverton St John. Um, very quiet, actually, I thought. Um, but the huge advantage for me meant that we're literally, if I turn the camera around, just by Roy's of Rocks and Main Car Park. Uh, wow, it's very muddy here this morning. Um, <coughs> so I was able to easily walk up to McDonald's for dinner last night. Um, uh, I overdid it slightly thinking I'd get around the toy shop with the boy. Um, I got about halfway around and then went, oh, no, I need a rest. Um, but this morning's going to be the longest walk yet as we uh, need to make the walk up to the train station, which I think is probably just about as far as I can manage. Um, I'll see you once I've met up with the clan who are coming from the shop. We all made it happily to the train station. I survived the walk. And at the train station is this amazing map of the Norfolk Broads. Yeah. You like it, do you, Carson? Really yeah. And now we just wait for our train. Um, off to sharing and we go. So a key thing for the holiday was what can I do without walking a great distance. And there's the end of the train line and the train. And there's the little steam railway. Can't be much shorter than that. Now, a competent videographer would probably have got like some shots of some steam trains or some other sort of fun things. But I kind of forgot because I'm on holiday. Um, I didn't even get any what they call B-roll. So here's a long video shot of the train station with no steam trains in it. But there was one, I promise. A bit of a rainy Sheringham um, and the walk from the train station to the beach was a little bit further than I'd hoped for. And I've just spied somewhere to sit down. But I mean, rain drizzle aside, it's beautiful. Sort of, I don't know if the video will pick up all the bunting across the little fishing villagey kind of buildings and uh, just a lovely place to be. So um, I'm gonna go and sit on that rather wet piece of concrete um, just while I have a rest and wait for the others to appear with some ice cream. Exploring a steam railway for the day was pretty much a brilliant idea um, and it's been lovely. I use the word lovely a lot apparently. Uh, the walk down to the beach at Sherring, which I thought was fairly short, has kind of tired me out now. Uh, and I'm going to go and sit on this very wet bench until hopefully a train appears here in just a few minutes. And if you're wondering, that's B-roll footage. See you back at the boat. We had quite a sleepy chug up at the Bure, past Roxham up to a place called Coltishall, uh, which uh, is just beautiful. I'll put some photos in. Um, and there was not another boat here. We had the place to ourselves. It is right next door to a pub, which was a little bit noisy. But um, if I wanted to go to the pub, it was right there. Um, in terms of fatigue, absolutely no problems at all. Um, yes, the walk at Sheringham was definitely too far, and, and we all do it, don't we? we do, just think we can do slightly more than we can. Um, but 45 minutes back on the train was a good rest, uh, and then about another 20 minutes on the boat before we then set off. Um, so not too bad at all. Uh, and tomorrow will be the most interesting day of all, I should think, because we're gonna do lots of things, but hopefully all manageable. Hello and welcome to Malthouse Broad. Uh, we're mud weighted just off the moorings at Ramworth. We're out here at the front of the boat in the regular bathtub kind of, they are swing around there, bathtub well deck thing, which obviously is great for uh, sitting here when the weather's nice, it's a bit chilly today, and uh, you can feed the ducks. Um, and pretty safe space, I mean, there's a great big distance there. Um, for my five-year-old, as long as he's only got his knees on the seat, I'm fairly happy. Um, so all nice and safe. What could be more perfect and easy than eating lunch on the boat whilst mud waiting and just floating around on the broad? Definitely makes it nice and easy on my fatigue. A mud weight is a big heavy weight you throw over the front of the boat or the bow and it gets stuck in the mud and stops you from floating away. Too heavy for me to lift, uh, so I had to ask the wife to do that. But there you go. This is Toad Hole Cottage at Howe Hill, um, and I chose to come here because I've never been here. And also, if I turn a little bit, 
that's our boat. So it's really close to the mooring and again fulfills that tick in the book about, yes, I can get to it. The Toadhole Cottage is a 19th century uh, cottage showing just what it would have been like living here as a marshman. I won't give any further details away than that because that would be spoilers. You have to come here and find out for yourself. But uh, as far as the signs say, it is all pretty authentic and original. This stairwell uh, certainly gives a bit of exercise for the legs. It's uh, only just slightly less than a ladder. Blimey. One of the things you can do here at Howe Hill is uh, go on an electric boat ride, which as someone who's going on a boating holiday seems a little bit silly to do, but there is the little electric boat that you can go on, and it's called, I can't get that, uh, uh, it, 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 that way. It's called the electric eel. Well, that's not called the electric eel, that's someone else's boat. There is the electric eel. Ah, got it in the end. Uh, I think it's like 10 pound a person or something, and you pay in the little cottage we were in, which again is right by the boat. And the boat is just the other side of there, and the cottage is in that bit of woodland somewhere. And our penultimate stop of the day is Ersted Stade. You'll notice I'm wearing a bike helmet because I've got my electric bike. And I appreciate not everyone with long COVID or a fatigue syndrome can use a bike. Uh, so this works for me. Um, and we're all on different stages on our fatigue journeys. Uh, but this is going to enable us to take a, a little bike ride or in the case of the wife and son, a little scooter ride to the Barton Boardwalk, which is hopefully about five minutes cycle away no in my case electric ride away the Barton boardwalk is pretty much perfect for what we wanted um, it's exactly uh, a level smooth surface you could have easily brought a wheelchair uh, or a mobility scooter around it um, there's benches every couple of hundred meters I suppose um, and we're now at this viewing platform overlooking Barton Broad um, and there's several benches here and it's just a nice quiet place to overlook the broad and see the wildlife. Um, the electric bike technically isn't allowed around the boardwalk but it's really quiet today so I'm going to fess up and say it helped me out to halfway and then we saw some people and I left it uh, halfway around which is fair enough I think. Um, so that's that, we'll see what other wildlife we can spot. This is an example of the Barton boardwalk halfway around. Um, just the other side of those bushes there is a little bench and I imagine there'll be another little bench sort of over there somewhere. Um, as I say, perfectly accessible, very good. One of the advantages of this style of boat, which uh, is referred to by most people as a bathtub, uh, and I've done a separate boat review, it's not necessarily long COVID focused, but uh, you're welcome to watch it. I'll put a link in the description. Better YouTubers can put a link up there, but I don't know how to do that. Um, uh, it, anyway, the advantage of this boat is it has this great big outside front deck with nice big bench seating and uh, it's wonderful feeding ducks and just sitting and chilling out. And here at uh, Wayford Bridge, which is where we've stopped for our final night, um, it's just a nice place to sit out and enjoy the river. And if I just stop talking, you might hear all the bird song. If you heard it, great. If you didn't, oh, I probably won't make the cut. Um, you might prefer to go straight back to the boatyard for the last night to make it easier on the morning. I can't do that. I hate going back to the boatyard. I feel like I've robbed myself for some holiday. We're only about uh, just over an hour's uh, cruise from the boatyard. Um, and whilst we do that, here's a quick photo montage of the things we got up to. Because overall, I think this has been a pretty good holiday. A quick review of our boating holiday then. We spent our time in the northern part of the Norfolk Broads. Uh, we picked up our boat, Spring Horizon 2, from Richardson's Boating Holidays, based in Stalham. This is by no means an advert. I'm not endorsed by them whatsoever. Um, but we've had several happy family holidays from there, so uh, I can personally recommend them. On our first afternoon, we sailed down to Ludden Bridge, where the following morning we went into the little shop, which is like a gift shop slash convenience store, uh, which is just over the bridge, and also had a lovely new bakery we'd not seen before with some lovely bakery products. We then spent the morning cruising down the River Bure to Stracey Arms, uh, where there's 
usually some donkeys you can have a look at and some goats you can pet. Uh, another little uh, gift shop slash farm shop. Uh, and also a cafe, which was lovely. Uh, we then cruised back up the Bure to Salhouse Broad, um, which is where we saw the, the children's play park and was just like a nice little woodland area right by the mooring. Uh, we, it was also around here we found the ice cream boat um, somewhere there. Uh, and then we spent our second night technically in Hoverton, but everyone calls it Wroxham, which is known as the capital of the Broads, where you'll find Roy's of Wroxham and also a train station really, really close. So if the train station can get you to other places, that's a very useful spot because it's only about a five minute walk away from at least the uh, Hoverton St John moorings. Uh, we then used the train the next day, uh, which isn't on this map, uh, up to the north coast of Sheringham. We came back and chugged further up the River Bure to Coltershall. And up here at Coltershall, there are two pubs right by the mooring. So if you want a pub dinner that night, again, easy walking distance. Uh, on our last full day, we moored up in Malthouse Broad near Ranworth. Well, actually, we mud waited. Um, that was a nice way to have lunch. We then chugged back up the River Ant, stopping at Howe Hill, which is where the little Marshman's Cottage Museum is. Um, there's also a nature reserve. Uh, with that boat ride that will take you around the nature reserve. So again, really good for fatigue because you haven't got to do anything. And our last big stopover was at Ersted, uh, but you could also stop at Gay Stave for the Barton Boardwalk, which was brilliantly accessible if you can get to it. It was about a five, 10 minute bike ride for us. Obviously I didn't need to actually do any riding. My electrical bike did the work. Uh, so if you can get there, that was a nice place to go. We finished the night up at Wayford Bridge, which again also has another pub uh, the Wayford Bridge Inn, very easy walking distance, so you don't need to do any cooking that night if you didn't want to either. That was our holiday. But there are loads of other places we could have visited, um, and if you are considering this sort of trip and would like to have a chat about it, do feel free to contact me in the comments. Well, we're back in Sussex, and it's not as nice as the Norfolk Broads. The weather's certainly not so nice outside, but we've had time to think about our holiday and reflect on it, and it was still a great holiday. Long COVID did not stop us. Um, definitely, you need some able-bodied assistance to help you moor up the boat. And realistically, the holiday would not have happened without my wife, who I have to say a massive thank you to. Um, it can be a bit cold in the morning. Sometimes the cold can negatively affect my fatigue. Um, but I went there knowing that, so was dressed for it. Hence, you'll have seen some of the clips I'm wearing big woolly hats on days that you wouldn't really need them. Um, but overall, I think it's been a fantastic holiday and we've loved it. So um, hopefully we'll go again.